Yeah, cool. See you, Nick. Good luck on your other tests. But we know reason to from before. Reinjecting what it is we know, we get negative negative a sub zero over four times three times two times one. And if n is equal to three, we get a sub five is equal to negative a sub three over five times four. But I know a sub three again. So I get negative a sub one over five times four times three times two. So we notice some patterns. First, the formula always recurses back to a sub zero if you're on the even side, or a sub one if you're on the odd side. At this point, I think I'm willing to generalize, and that is the pattern that's going on here is a sub two n, that is a sub 2 times n is a sub even. It will always go back to a sub 0. And then there's a sign alternation. When, n, when I'm at a sub 2, it's a negative. When I'm at a sub 4, it's a positive. So this is negative 1 to the n over now look what's appearing here. There's a 4, and what is this? This is a 4 factorial. So whatever the subscript is, there's a factorial of that. So now we check. If this n's equal to 1, we're talking about a sub 2. a sub 2 needs to be negative a naught over 2 times 1. So if n is equal to 1, I have negative 1 to the 1, that's a negative 1, a sub 0, and then 2 times 1, so that's a 2 factorial. It's right there. Something similar is going on here. This is a sub 2n. That would be even. Plus 1 gives me odd. These all go back to a sub 1. There is a sign alternation going on. And then notice 5 times 4 times 3 times 2. I can put a times 1 there. And so this is 2n plus 1 factorial. So, what this means here is that I've solved the pattern for this recurrence relation because knowing a naught will give me any even number coefficient. Knowing a1 will give me a, any odd number coefficient. What are these coefficients? They're solutions to this recurrence relation. What is this recurrence relation? This is the equation needed to zero out this Taylor polynomial, or this Taylor series, by zeroing out its coefficients. Where did this relation come from? It came from injecting this power series assumption into the differential equation itself in an effort to find those a sub n's, which we now have. So, going back to our original assumption, y of x is equal to the sum, n equal 0 to infinity of a sub n times x to the n, which I'm going to break out as the sum n equals 0 to, to infinity of a sub n or a sub 2n times x to the 2n plus the sum n equal 0 to infinity of a sub 2n plus 1 times x to the 2n plus 1. But I know these. I found them. What are they in the case of this ordinary differential equation? They are sum 0 to infinity of this quantity, negative 1, 
to the n times a sub 0 times x to the 2n over 2n factorial plus, now injecting the second one, sum n equals 0 to infinity, um, negative 1 to the n a sub 1 over 2n plus 1 factorial times x to the 2n plus 1. So I've used this power series. I've broken it back down, so I'm going to get rid of that. What I want to notice here is that these do not depend on n. So I'll bring them out front. So we get a naught times the sum n equals 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the n, x to the 2n over 2n factorial plus a1 sum n equals 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the n, x to the 2n plus 1, get over 2n plus 1, factorial. Now you might notice that nothing is known about a0 and a1, so they are real numbers. And you might also notice, this is the Taylor series for cosine. This is the Taylor series for sine. So here A0 is playing the role of C1, and A1 is playing the role of C2. And that is how you solve the simple harmonic oscillator problem with power series. Interesting question to ask here is, what happens if this were a negative? If this were a negative, then the problem is y double prime is equal to y. The solutions here are cosh of x and cinch of x, the hyperbolics. If, there's a if there was a minus here instead of a plus, there would be a minus here, 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 and now a plus right here. Now that there's a plus right here, the signs don't alternate. So this is gone. So this is gone. If those sign alternations disappear, if they're not there anymore, then these are just the even terms of e to the x. These are the odd terms of e to the x. And this is cosh, and this is cinch. And again, we see the relationship between the trig functions through their series representations. Okay. Now, this is not how I would typically go about solving a differential equation that was as easy as this. But if the differential equation had variable coefficients, then the solution would be not attainable through exponential guessing, and you would have to resort to this. And this gets into a field of mathematics called the theory of special functions. Functions that do not have sine, cosine, exponential, or rational function representations.